Yeah, hi, my name is Diane Bennett and I teach chemistry at Sacramento City College. Um, the course that I'd like to talk with you about today is integrated organic and biochemistry for allied health students. And it's a very content heavy course, um, preparing students that are interested into going into nursing, dental hygiene, and those, those career paths. Um, currently, um, OER supports student success in my course in three different ways. Um, initially, the journey started with um, taking my traditional lectures and creating um, video lectures by topic that have accompanying lecture outlines. And with that resource available, I was able to flip the course. And at that point, um, the biggest challenge is the resources felt scattered. And I was really looking for a unified, unified platform for the materials. And um, as fate would have it, uh, Professor Delmar Larson from UC Davis, um, a short distance from our campus, he attended one of our department meetings and um, shared what he was doing with developing online text for his courses. He was looking for collaborators and I was like, oh, this is the solution that I was looking for. Um, so with his help, we um, developed an integrated um, GOB text for the course. And then with the flipped format and working with the students and really being able to look at how they're studying and solving problems, I realized that there was a gap in their preparation, hmm. um, basic um, course knowledge that they really needed to understand to be able to um, go on to the more complex ideas. They weren't really internalizing it like I would, had hoped for. And so I have a pilot project this um, semester where they're doing practice online quizzes to, so they can self-assess how well they have internalized this basic core knowledge. And so those are the three, the three legs on the stool, so to speak, of OER in my course. Um, the very first thing was um, on our campus, we call it FLEX. We do professional development at the beginning of every semester and a math professor, Rick Wood Nancy, um, he shared that he had flipped his class in math and I, it just made so much sense to me that um, I, I, you know, I applied for a partial sabbatical and had the support of our media, media resources and um, was able to get the journey started. And then I shared how Del Mar came in um, at just the right time to offer support for the OER and, um, and then with the equity efforts um, across colleges now, I was able to get a small equity grant to, and the support of IT for the online quizzes. So um, this is a lot of, I, I'm an analog girl in a digital world, and I really receive a lot of support from the, the college and the greater OER community. Absolutely. So, um, with the students, I start on the ChemWiki homepage just so that they're aware of the depth and breadth of the resources available from this one site. Um, they typically don't bookmark this page, but um, I'll, let's work our way through it. Uh, I also find this next page very exciting. Two years ago, when I first developed the text, there were about a half a dozen colleges that were part of our um, ChemWiki community. And now as I slowly scroll through here, you can see that it's really become a national and international um, collaboration of faculty working together to create an OER community. Um, so now I'll scroll back up to Sacramento City College. Try not to make people woozy. Um, and then on this page, um, I think this page is worth a moment too um, because of just the wonderful results that I've had um, many of my colleagues within the chemistry department are in the process of adopting their own OER texts. And even the term ChemWiki is becoming a bit limiting because now we can see here we have um, some nutrition um, professors and they have found an OER text. And this um, highlights another great benefit to this format is while they're using the same text, they can each customize it to their own pedagogical preferences. And I think that that's just a really great um, attribute as well. And um, also our biology department, we have a professor working on her infectious disease text. So the community continues to grow. 
And now we'll get to the page where the students would typically bookmark. So let me show you this. And so this would be our, um, our, our text. And so it has all of the elements of a traditional text. We have the chapters and the end of chapter homework and the homework solutions. And, and that's pretty much, you know, consistent across all texts. Um, one thing I have noticed in the OER text world is the end of chapter homework can be missing or very weak. Um, I had the benefit of um, some financial support from the dean to have some students help me draft homework questions to build up that aspect of the text. And now, just to briefly show you um, what, makes, what makes it better, in my opinion, um, here's the chapters for the text. And as I mentioned, we cover every one of these chapters during the 16-week semester. The students are essentially learning the minimum amount of chemistry to get to um, biochemical metabolism. So let's take a closer look at acids and bases. And acid-based acid chemistry, um, if we looked at any introductory text, it would have these same basic um, sections to it. Let's look a little more closely here. This, this topic of acid-based chemistry transcends pretty much every scientific discipline, and it can be hard for students. Here's the chemical reactivity that water can um, dissociate into the acidic hydronium and basic hydroxide ions. And then we can look at this mathematically and this is an inverse relationship, and the concentrations are very small. So to make the numbers friendly, um, over time we decided to take the negative log. So now we have a situation where we've got inverse relationships and negative logs. Quite naturally, students tend to find this confusing. Um, but, and then pretty much every textbook on the planet ends with this table right here. And so this table encapsulated the chemical theory and the mathematical formulas that support this understanding. And so at this point, other than this text being free, it just looks like every other text. But here's where it gets good. We can actually embed interactive, well, there we go, interactive um, animations, right? So let's look, and these build in understanding. So here we take our electrode and we put it in. And then those everyday substances that we saw on the table, now they come to life. We can see with our hand soap, it's basic. And we can look at how we have the high pH, or we can go to something very attractive like vomit. And now we see that it's acidic with the low pH. And so this builds a foundation for us to help the students deepen their understanding. And now we can actually link it to the chemical reactivity and traditionally, acids are shown in red and bases are blue. And so here with our chicken soup, we can see at the acidic level all of the red. And then if we go, students are usually surprised by soda pop, how acidic it is. And once again, looking at this inverse relationship with the negative logs. And then ultimately, we can go to something even more interactive where now the students can have the physical experience of raising the hydronium ion concentration and seeing the pH drop and looking at the effect at a chemical level in the solution. So now with this really deeper, broader understanding, there's a solved practice problem and then a couple more practice problems that also that they can work on and with the solutions provided as well. So the students really leave this topic with a, a, strong, a strong foundation of something that's quite complex. Now, um, with my text, um, the students have a choice to use this free online text or to buy a traditional text. Um, at this point, about only 5% of the students are actually buying a text, but 100% of the students are using the OER text and for this page right here. This is where that unifying of the platform that I mentioned. And so to keep with our acid base, I'll, I'll go here and show you this is the power of having the OER just beyond all of those resources I just shared with you in the text. Here's an example. So here are um, 
the lecture outlines that I referenced. And so the students can print these or purchase them from the bookstore, or um, they can even download them to a tablet and annotate there. All right, so, um, and then what happens is then the students can actually go in and I have links to the videos two ways. One way is through YouTube, and if they require closed caption, they go directly to the Sac City website. And then here is where um, I'll briefly show you the accompanying lecture that those notes go with. And then I'll just scroll ahead a bit so now we can see the link. We accepted the proton from the acid to create the hydronium ion. And so I'll, I'll X out of that now. So then you can see that they, they've had the brief introduction through the text, and now they have more in-depth practice through taking the video lecture notes. And then they can go um, directly. To, and then we go to home. We go into class, and we work more problems together. Um, the other great thing about the assignments sheet is that it shows them exactly what assignments are due for that day as well as lab. So it's that, that central resource that helps students plan and organize and stay on top of their course materials. Okay, so each of the videos has some follow-up post-video practice problems and they bring their post-video practice problems to class and I start class with those with those practice problems and those emphasize each of the key learning ob objectives for each video and then I have developed homework packets I call them inches in class homework and they have the students working in groups on their inches and um, then I, I have established work checks there's a group report and so periodically they um, they compel them to raise their hand to have me interact either they can have me help them at any time. I walk around the room with a small whiteboard and what I affectionately call my professor utility belt that has some dry erase markers and an eraser and a calculator so that when I'm working with them in small groups, I can write in a way that the whole group can see what's going on. Um, okay. Ideally, they all finish their inches. They're in class homeworks in class. If not, that becomes their homework. And then um, I've left the textbook pretty, um, pretty Spartan because I want each faculty that chooses to adopt it to be able to make it their own. So I do provide additional supplemental homework and other activities beyond the resources here that I feel like are what make it my class and leave the space open for others. Absolutely. What I noticed in working with the students directly and watching and observing how they are working with the course material, it became very obvious that some basic course knowledge that was essential to their success in the class, they weren't internalizing it. They were continuing to refer to their handouts. And so this is just a, a mini quiz just to show you that for all of the key learning objectives, and I will, um, I'll intentionally miss one. So the students click through, and these are things that, that should really be at their, have internalized and are at their fingertips. And so um, typically the quizzes have 10 to 15 questions. They complete the quiz. The response is immediate. It lets them know, oh, oops, I missed this one. And so then they can go back. There's no hints or anything because there are basic knowledge handouts that they can go directly to. Usually all they need to see is, oh, I missed it up, and they can figure it out cool part is they can reset the quiz and retake it as many times as they like and each time that they do the quiz it um, it scrambles the questions and the answers to make it a fresh experience and I've cr created quite an inventory of questions but I'm just kind of keeping building with our pH example that we've been working with this semester so that's something I'm excited about and um, Looking forward to, this is the first semester, so I'm looking forward to collecting data and getting student survey feedback to see how well it's working. But the unsolicited response is the, the good students are really appreciating this extra support. One of the great things about an OER text is that it does provide insights into student learning patterns. And so if we look here, 
on um, the left here's the data from my class from uh, the previous semester and we can see that there's a pretty constant use and interaction of the students with the textbook and then um, Delmar Larson bless his heart he was willing to share his data with a non flipped format and these arrows indicate where the exams are and if we look at the data we can see that there is a spike of student interaction with the text right before the exam which would imply cramming just a one small example of some of the added benefits of an OER text and my own personal pitch for the flipped format. Um, also, I think it's great to look at um, student performance. So, you know, I have relatively small classes and only three semesters worth of courses have completed the whole process. So we can see the number of students that have started the course and um, this is transitioning more. This semester, it's only 5% have bought the text and 95% are using the wiki text. And when surveyed, 100% of the students say they access the wiki text. Um, here's retention. How many students do we actually post a grade for? Looks pretty comparable, but once again, small data sets. And when we look at success, you know, probably these are about basically the same number. So there's definitely not any kind of negative impact. And it, I think it does um, make a more enriching and satisfying learning experience for the students. They, get, I get to receive a lot of positive feedback. And um, just in the four semesters um, that I've used the wiki text, I, looking at the textbook cost, um, the students have saved about $50,000 in resources. Oh, well, I just want to let um, the greater OER community know that the text that I've just shared with you is available to any instructor to use. It includes the text with the linked animations, the end of chapter homework and solutions, and people are, are more than welcome to use the video lectures and accompanying lecture outlines. Um, the way that each professor would make the course their own would be through the supplemental homework and the in-class homework activities. How do you want to spend your valuable, precious inner time with students in class? Um, and it can open up opportunities for a more student-centered approach. Oh, um, I don't know, you know, just beyond the data that I've shown that the students um, really appreciate the, the text and the flipped format and my classroom sounds like a cocktail party and with students, you know, talking about course material. I mean, what more can we ask for? And for, um, I am not tech savvy. I am an analog girl in a digital world. And so for anyone out there that feels like this is just way too complicated, um, I just want to remind you that there are so many resources available to us within our own campuses, um, partial sabbaticals, media resources, IT, none of the things that I've done would have been possible without the tremendous support that I've received both from the campus and Del Mar and the greater OER community. So as I pull in these animations and video links, um, it's really, it's a global effort and it's a lot of fun. And we've coined the phrase in our department, come on in, the water's fine. <laughs>